From ASC 716 to 722, did wind loads become more complicated? Did wind speeds increase? Do we have higher pressures? Let's cover all of that in this video. Let's go. Before I dive into all the changes, I just wanted to mention that I've been covering ASC 716 in this entire playlist because the PE exam and the SE exam are both still referencing ASC 716 and many states still reference 716, some still 710. I'm in Florida, we are already referencing 722, so I thought it'd be great for us to see what has changed and what has been updated since 716, because at some point, all the exam, exams and all the states will move on to 722. So the first change here are wind speed maps. Um, we, we see here that we have 722 as the solid line, we have ASC 722 here as the solid line and the dashed line is 716. And we can see from the photo that it hasn't really changed much. Most lines remain the same. In the northeast portion here of the US, we have a little bit more discrepancy between the dashed line and the solid line. But overall, not many changes, just some refinement, I would say. The second change is for the velocity pressure exposure coefficient, KZ or KH and we don't have a whole lot of change here as far as magnitude but we can see that from exposure B up to or starting at height 40 at 40 feet it decreased to we can see here 74 it was 76 before and most of them from 716 to 722 decreased or increased slight decreased slightly from 76 to 74 81 to 79 and so on and so forth and then for exposure c now only buildings uh, building heights starting in height 140 they also decreased a little bit and no changes you know, if i go back here no changes were made for exposure d so as we can see as far as low-rise buildings nothing really changed uh, for buildings less than 40 feet in height. The third change is for windborne debris regions. And this is more of a grammar or nomenclature type of change and some refinement because before we had coastal mean water line or mean high water line. The, the word coastal is, can be a little bit vague. So now they adjusted that to say exposure D. So that became a little bit more specific. Now, this is a big one for us because we just covered four, we just went through four videos on main wind force resisting system. But now, because in 716, we had in chapter 27, we had part one and part two for the directional procedure and then part one and part two for the envelope procedure. So four methods to calculate wind loads, main wind force resisting system. Now, we only have two methods. That's what I was hoping for because I didn't like the simplified procedures. I think it just adds more for us to learn through the code and essentially arrive at around the same answer um, for the simplified procedure, which is, was part two of chapter 27 and then part two of chapter 28. Those are gone. And now we only have two procedures for main wind force resisting system. We have the directional procedure and the envelope procedure without the simplified method that associate, was associated with each one of them. And now we have chapter 32, that's for tornado loads, both components and cladding and main wind force resisting. So if you look in the commentary of 716, it was there, it was hidden a little bit there in, in the commentary, so not as, I guess, not code, but not within the provisions. Now it has its own chapter. This other change here now, um, components and cladding is a big one that I really liked. Essentially, the zones were simplified for a lot of gable roofs, a lot of diagrams that we had before. You can see here that we had these corner zones everywhere and now they got rid of, they essentially adjusted the pressure coefficients and got rid of all those corner zones, which is nice, just simplifies things a lot more. And I'm gonna go over here some more diagrams. The one prior was for gable roofs from with a slope from seven to 20 degrees. Now from 27 to 45, similar thing, and you can see the trend here. When the slope is a little bit shallow, 
then we don't have corner zones. Now when we have a little bit of a higher slope, you, you start to get corner zones here, but they still eliminated at the, the ridge line, the, the corner zone. And then when you have a hip root, then we also have the same pattern. From 7 to 20, got rid of all these corner zones here. But then as we increase the slope, I think they're going to start to pop up again. This, I think they still got rid of all the four corner zones. And maybe, maybe if there was one, I don't know if I copied it here, you can double check. Maybe they started to include them once the slope got a little bit steep, but I can't recall for sure. This is another good one that I liked. Um, before we had several graphs for calculating overhang pressures. Now it's all into one section, which is section 30.7. And you just go there for your overhang pressures and it's essentially gonna guide you to find out what these two pressures are and you add them up based on your Roof. If you have a gable roof, you're gonna calculate a specific, pre I say here, overhang pressures are determined by the sum of the GCP of the overhang's top and bottom surfaces, determined by the applicable roof and wall external pressure coefficients. So essentially, what this is saying is, if you have a hipped roof, you're going to, the, this section is gonna point you to the hipped roof diagram, you get the roof pressures, and then you're gonna see what the associated wall pressure is, zone 4, zone 5, and then add them up. Section 30.7 has guidance for that. My point is, now it's a lot nicer to go to one section that's for roof overhangs and then find everything that you need there, as opposed to being thrown to all different sections of ASC, ASC 7. Now, just a few or I guess several other updates, but that I'm not gonna go in detail about now, but I want to list them so that you are aware of what was changed or what was added. Um, in 722. The first one is are in these two sections here um, where we have provisions for main reinforced resist resisting system calculations and components and cladding calculations on elevated buildings. So you see here the respective sections for that. We have new criteria for roof pavers. That's important because we see pavers, at least here in Florida, everywhere. And I think before maybe people were taking components and cladding for a roof and kind of extrapolating things to select paver systems. Now we have a specific section for that. We have new provisions for ground mounted solar panels. Solar panels are really popular nowadays throughout the country. So ASE 7 is refining more and more the calculations for, for those elements. New provisions for attached canopies on buildings with height heights greater than 60 feet. That's also a good one that I liked because before I, I think we were limited in the uh, previous provisions to a certain height. And then the diagram, I didn't put the diagram here, but the diagram for stepped flat roof was updated and I think reflects a little bit more of what the roof pressures were if the building was not stepped. And now that it's stepped, it's keeping the same, I guess, zones, but just changing the coefficients. This is also one that I really liked because now ASC 7 has 722 specifically references the hazard tool, which is a really nice, really nice tool. Before we used ATC hazards and now um, has a ASC 7 hazard tool, I think has a lot more data and it's referenced within the SE722, so it's even nicer. And I don't think you can find wind speed maps for Puerto Rico and the US Virgin Islands um, in the SE722, but it essentially guides you to the hazard tool, and there you can actually find the wind speeds in those areas. There you have it. These are the main changes. Overall, I don't think wind speeds changed that much. I don't think pressures changed that much with those updates and the KZ values. Nothing really changed drastically. So overall, I think the changes to seven from 7.16 to 22 were good changes. I think made the provisions a little bit simpler to follow. And I hope we have this trend going into the next code cycle. If you want to dive deeper into wind loads and how to apply pressures on an actual building and learn from full examples, I am developing a course and I would love your feedback. If you could fill out a quick 30 second survey and give me feedback on my course outline on what I'm developing behind the scenes, that would be much appreciated. The link is in the description below and I will see you next time.